State Department documents released earlier this week show the White House knew that the Libya attack, that attack that killed four Americans, including Ambassador Chris Stevens, was terrorism. Just two hours after the emails, the Islamic militant group Ansar al-Sharia claim responsibility for the attacks at the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. With me now, Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harridge. Catherine, thank you so much for being here. Nice to see you in person. Catherine, uh, these emails were sent to some very high people in the White House. Who got them? And how high up did these messages go? I have some of the emails right here, and I think these are the single most important documents that we've seen in the Libya scandal because this takes real-time information of how the attack unfolded to the National Security Council staff within the White House. So that's the White House Situation Room. Those are the top National Security Advisors for the present. And also, when you decode the email addresses, what you see here is that it went to the Special Assistant for Secretary of State Clinton, whose job it is, take an email like this and go, you need to pay attention to this. Also the number two and the number three. So there's no way the administration can deny that they did not know what was happening in Benghazi. These are not just sitting time. around in the inbox no, somewhere to be picked up not. over the weekend. Mm -mm, they're not. And the fact that these emails go inside to the heart of the White House, the White House Situation Room, means the president's top advisors knew it was unfolding as a terrorist attack and that this group, Ansar al-Sharia, was claiming responsibility. And that is important five, six weeks later because the only suspect we have in custody is part of this group that wants to establish an Islamic state in eastern Libya. So all of the intelligence has come full circle to what they knew on 9-11. And Catherine, some of the uh, news that you have broken mm -hmm. is that there's really smoking gun evidence that the content of these emails indicate there's no way this could have been just some spontaneous mob. Well, the emails show that they believed it was a terrorist attack from the outset, but separately there is physical evidence that was described to me as a smoking gun. There was mortar fire that was used specifically on the annex. This was the CIA outpost, part of the second wave of the attack. To use a mortar, you have to know distance, elevation, weather conditions, as well as the weight of the shell to do a mathematical calculation for the angle. This is not something that at three in the morning you rock up and decide to fire a mortar that's going to be a direct hit. This is something that has to be staged in advance and I was told the plates that the mortar would have used to fire would have to be set during daylight hours, so at least a day in advance. Again, another piece of evidence that shows it was not pre-planned. We now know that CIA operatives ask repeatedly, at least three times, mm -hmm. to get some backups, get some help there. Never happened. Why not, and who denied it? Well, the reporting from our Pentagon team is that some of the CIA operatives at the annex asked twice to go to the consulate to aid the ambassador and the others who were trapped there because they knew it was under fire. What we were told is that individuals on the ground denied that, told them to hold. Then there was a third request for backup for the annex when it came under attack. We're still waiting for a formal response from the CIA. But you have to ask the question, was there an effort, number one, to downplay the exposure of the size and the breadth of the CIA presence in eastern Libya. That, I think, is one of the great untold stories here. I had a conversation earlier this week with uh, Senator Lindsey Graham. He has repeatedly sent letters to General Petraeus at the CIA, to Defense Secretary Panetta. He's not so much as gotten a response. He's asking very pointed questions. Who knew about this situation? When did the president get notified? What did he do after he was notified? He has not been given an answer. Why is there a, and I'm going to use the term, I know you, you can't make editorial judgments, but I sure can. Mm -hmm. There was stonewalling. Stonewalling there and cover-up. continues cover -up. to be stonewalling. And why? Mm -hmm. And, and what, is, what is it we're trying to protect here? You're onto something extremely significant here. On September 14th, the CIA Director David Petraeus briefed members of Congress on the status of the investigation. And what I have heard through my reporting, without releasing classified information, is that those lawmakers were extremely angry and disappointed with the CIA Director because he was so wedded to the administration's narrative that it was this video and seemed to completely disregard the other reporting about the attack. Senator McCain told me that he is incredibly disappointed with the CIA director, someone who for many years has been untouchable because of his military accomplishments. Mm. And there has not been a good explanation. I believe that much of this will come back to weapons and the movement of weapons out of Libya to Turkey 
and then into Syria and what the United States knew about the movement of those weapons and whether it did anything to stop the movement of those weapons. I have one piece of data that says Ambassador Stevens was in Benghazi on 9-11 to negotiate a weapons transfer to get these SA-7s out of the hands of extremists. The State Department dismissed that idea. But to me, it makes sense why he would put himself in such a volatile area on the 11th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. And he not only put himself mm -hmm. in that position, but there was an attempt to try to keep his visit low-key so it would not be well known that he was in Benghazi, mm -hmm. because likely there would have been more of a security presence there. Was there inside information that leaked that the right. ambassador mm -hmm. was in Benghazi? There, there are two data points I think we want to pay attention to here. Uh, based on our ongoing reporting at Fox, we were able to show that on September 6th, a Libyan vessel arrived in Turkey with what was reported to be a large shipment of these shoulder-fired missiles. Five days later, the U.S. ambassador is in Benghazi, and you know who he's meeting with? He's meeting with the Turkish diplomat in Benghazi. <laughs> Five days earlier, we weapons had arrived. Why did they want to keep the visit low key when they knew repeatedly from their people on the ground that security was the Achilles heel? I don't know. But I think this will unfold and I think one of the issues that will come to the surface is going to be the movement of these weapons. Uh, Catherine, let me just say you have done some stellar reporting on this and I appreciate uh, your uncovering some extraordinary details. Well, I, pr I appreciate that. I think it's important for those four people who lost their lives mm. that we honor them with the facts and the answers in this case.